Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. As you probably have guessed by now, one of the things I'm gonna be doing today is feeding the adult colubrid snakes. Now, what's interesting is we're in that weird time of year where some of them have laid eggs and are going back onto food. The vast majority of the females are off food because they're gravid or pregnant and they're about to lay eggs. And the males are kind of a little bit picky too. So we don't feed nearly the amount of rodents that we normally feed during the off season in the beginning or the end of the season. But uh, but anyways, we do still have to feed twice a week. I'm also gonna collect a whole bunch of eggs today because there's a lot of colubrid eggs. And beyond that, I'm really not sure what's gonna happen, but uh, what do you say we get this day started? So the hard part is, of course, this time of year, is to figure out what wants to eat and what doesn't want to eat. This male, who has the male kind of silver mark on him, uh, he is obviously still ready to eat, but yet some females are full of eggs, so they're not eating, and some females just laid eggs, and they may not eat either, but uh, this guy is obviously pretty ambitious when it comes to feeding, so it's a little bit tricky because it's not just like you open a drawer and throw a mouse, and you have to actually literally look, see, all right, is she gravid, has she laid, what's the deal, blah, 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 blah. So anyways, I'm gonna get this guy back in his cage so he can eat in some privacy. The other thing this time of year can do is because the females are, a lot of them are pregnant, it gives you an opportunity to kind of beef the males up during that period of time because oftentimes males will stop feeding really regularly during a breeding season, but when there's that gap where they haven't been with the female for say a week because everything is pregnant, they kind of go back onto food. So it gives you about a two or three window to really hit the males to get some energy back because they've used so much energy over the last month and a half of breeding that they start to get thin. So this is a great opportunity as a breeder to put some weight back on those males, get them ready for round two of breeding. You know, a lot of people have been asking lately is, can you overbreed a snake, you know? So when I talk about second clutching, like beefing the males up and then the females up for a second clutch, you know, some people may wonder like, is that too much for them to do? Well, you know, colubrid snakes are geared to lay two clutches a year. Not all colubrids, but a lot of colubrids are meant to lay two clutches. So in the wild, they'll lay two clutches of eggs. So I always say really when it comes to overbreeding snakes, most of the time, it's like impossible to do, right? You can't overbreed them because they only will produce as much as that their bodies can handle producing. There are some rare exceptions like tricolor hogs, the trinket snakes, and a few other snakes like that. You can actually breed them to death, you know, porphyracea. Uh, so, so there are rare occasions, but the vast majority of snakes will only produce as much as they're meant to produce, so you can't overproduce them. So a second clutch isn't detrimental to them as long as you're getting enough nutrition into them. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Okay, so we are all set with feeding colubrids. So uh, the next thing in this process of feeding, I always say when you're snake breeding, it's calories in, 
production out. So we want to push a lot of calories into these snakes so they can produce well and be healthy. But if you do that, what do you get? You get snake eggs. And we have a lot of snake eggs to pull today, guys. So let's get started. Now, I was talking to a friend the other day, and I think maybe the unique thing about my vlog as a snake breeder is that I show you guys everything. I don't artificially candy coat it. I don't clean cages to show you cages. What you see is what you get, including mistakes. When we make mistakes, I like to share those with you guys. And this is a mistake that we made. This female Mexican Black King obviously laid a clutch of eggs. What do you notice that's missing from this box? There is no nest box for her. That's right, we missed her shed somehow and she laid on the bedding. Now, if we wouldn't have caught it, these eggs by the morning would be garbage. You know, they would be deflated and they would probably not live. So that was a mistake on our part. The good news is, is that we check our snakes every single day. So the mistake didn't cost us this time, but hey, it's something that you have to be well aware of. But this looks like a really beautiful clutch of eggs. Take a look. Look at her. Woo. Look at that. We'll just slowly, gently get these eggs away from her. Oh, don't you. Don't, 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 don't. Ah, oh, there we go. So good job. So. Again, this is a beautiful clutch of eggs. Take a look at that right there. Whew, <laughs> that's really nice. So there's two, four, six, seven eggs. So seven eggs, not a bad way to start. Next up is a Pyro Milana, or an Arizona Mountain King snake. There we go, pull this clutch. There we go, Ooh, look at that, that's a beautiful, that's nice. There's mama, hey mama. Get her out, look at how gorgeous that snake is, huh? Wow, that's a pretty snake right there. Just get her back in her cage. Go ahead, mama. There you go, please. Whoops. All right, and I tell you what, this is a pretty big clutch for an Arizona Mountain King snake. They typically only have about four, maybe five eggs. So uh, this clutch looks extremely nice. Look at that, that's two, four, six, seven good eggs. That's a good clutch for an Arizona Mountain King. But you know, earlier I was talking about double clutching. Arizona Mountain Kings rarely will double clutch, so we don't even try. Uh, once in a blue moon, you'll get them to double clutch, but it's really hard on them. So uh, that's it, she gives me seven eggs, that's all. She's done for the year. She has all the way until next year before she breeds again. So that's a long time of feeding her up before she's ready to be bred again. All right, so I'm very excited and very nervous to see See what's in this clutch here. This is a granite Max Max. And for whatever reason, the last couple years, our fertility hasn't been that great with the Max Max, in particular, the granite Max Max. So, <sighs> fingers crossed, guys. Okay, here's the mama. Oh my God, look at that, that's a beautiful clutch of eggs. Oh, oh, oh my God, that's not at all what I was expecting, just a disaster when I opened this up. I just thought, oh my God, it's gonna be all slugs. But look at this, this is just, oh my gosh, look at this clutch of eggs right here, guys. Wow, that is absolutely gorgeous. She did a great job. And look at how beautiful that animal is right there. I mean, that, oops, she looks like she's got one egg left in her. So you know what? I've got to get her back in her egg box. So again, sometimes they'll just lay the majority of her clutch and hang on. She's got one egg. I'll go ahead and monitor until tomorrow. If tomorrow she doesn't push that egg out, I'll try to do what they call palpate it out or manually try to massage it out. So, um, because it's right down by her vent. So hopefully she'll pass it on her own. But let's get these eggs and get her back in and hopefully she'll lay that egg. For those of you that are counting, that was 12 eggs for that granite Max Max. This girl is out of her box, but I don't know if she's laid or not. Oh, it does look like she's laid. Yep, she does. She's a little girl. This is a scaleless Texas rat snake, and uh, she's a pretty small girl, so I'm assuming it's going to be a relatively small clutch. But she looks so good, I was almost like, did she lay eggs? Because she looks still pretty chunky. Ooh, that's a really nice clutch of eggs for that little girl. Holy cow, look at that. That's two, four, six, eight, nine, nine eggs. I would have never expected a little girl like this to lay nine eggs. Wow, that's a really good clutch. All right, we're on a roll. Scratch that, I just candled this clutch of eggs right here that we just pulled, and there was one egg hiding underneath, so that was 10 eggs from that girl. That is an absolutely huge clutch. And again, you know, I've talked about why we candle eggs. So what happens is when a snake lays a clutch of eggs, the embryo is still able to kind of roll around, but within a short period of time, probably within a couple hours, they attach and adhere to the top of the egg and create what is, is like an air bubble so that they can actually breathe as they develop. And if you roll that egg and it's attached to the top, it'll roll over and the embryo will drown. So uh, unlike chicken eggs and even leopard gecko eggs and, and even some other you know eggs, you can roll around and they don't adhere. Snake eggs actually do adhere 
there. That's why sometimes you see pictures where on the top of the snake egg, you'll see a little like check. That just means that whoever pulled the clutch wants to make sure that they know that that's right side up. So anyways, 10 eggs from that clutch. On to the next scaleless. All right, what do we got here? Don't, don't, don't. Ooh, look at that clutch there. That's a nice clutch. Oh. Oh, I do see a couple little sluggers in there though, but let's see if we can get her out without getting bit. Come on, girl. There you go, girl. There you go, good girl. Way to go. All right, here we go. And again, you can see there's these two slugs here, but it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 good eggs, two slugs. Hey, it's still not bad. I mean, that's still a great ratio. And uh, I don't think mama's happy. You okay, girl? All right, we'll get these eggs set up. All right, guys, so we have two more clutches of eggs to pull today. I tell you, you know, it's so cool when you're breeding snakes and you're pulling eggs. It's exciting. You know, I know that babies are even more exciting, but you gotta get eggs before you get babies, at least with these types of snakes. So uh, I just love days like today because it's just exciting to know that we've worked so hard and we're finally seeing like, oh my God, you know, you can see how many clutches have only one or two slugs in them or 100% fertile. That means that we've worked really hard and we did everything right you know the animals are healthy the males were bred at the right time the, the hibernation worked. the food amount was good everything has to be perfect in order for you to have success right if your animals are unhealthy if they're underfed if they're not cared for properly you're not going to produce babies so the proof is in the pudding if you produce that means you're doing something right and that makes you feel good because you've been working so hard and you're kind of rewarded for it so anyway so two more clutches this one happens to be an annuary coral. So those pink corn snakes, they actually started, a lot of them with anurethrisix or black corns with a, uh, you know, you think, well, well, how can a black corn have more pink? But some black corns can actually develop some pink color. Uh, and, and that's kind of, you know, the ghost corns and the black corns had the pink. So anyways, this is an annuary coral. And look at that clutch of eggs right there. I mean, my gosh, that is a gorgeous clutch. Look at her, whoo. And you can see, let me, let me just pull these eggs really quick. We'll go ahead and set these down over here. And I'll show you kind of what I mean about the coral being pink. See how she's normal black corn would be black with just like kind of a gray look. And this girl, you can see all the pink in her. And, uh, and again, she doesn't look as good because she's just laid a clutch eggs. When she's just really looking good, you can see all that pink coming out. So again, that's gonna be a really great clutch. And that was actually uh, a snow corn, a coral snow corn was the father of that clutch. So half this clutch, because she's het, will be coral snows and half the clutch will be coral annery. So uh, anyways, a good clutch. Let's see what we have here. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 eggs. 14 good eggs, no slugs. All right guys, so last clutch of the day. And this happens to be a Kastachi Het Sunkist. Ooh, look at that clutch of eggs right there. Ooh, look at that. Now, that is a really beautiful snake. And uh, I tell you, that is a gorgeous clutch of eggs. I do see one kind of funky egg, but I still think it's fertile. It's kind of like, remember the other day when I pulled the ball python, I called it a boob egg? Well, uh, that's kind of the equivalent here. That may or may not go well. I'm not 100% sure, but let's take a look at this clutch right here. Look at that monster clutch of eggs right there. Whoo, doggy. All right, we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 22 eggs. I tell you what, that is a really good way to end the day of collecting snake eggs. So uh, we had two slugs, All the, every egg I pulled, we only had two slugs, so that is absolutely cool. Well, I guess two and a half, because there's one kind of goofy looking egg here, but hey, that was still really good. Uh, Noah's helping Jessica with some leopard geckos, and then uh, I think him and Lori are going out to the store because he has a, uh, an idea. He wants to get one of those idea boards, which I think is really good, you know, so he can write down some things. And then uh, I'll check back here before I wrap the day up. Hey guys, we're at Office Max. I am picking, we are picking up a whiteboard for my little imagination slash dream board slash reach your goals. You know, I gotta set some goals for my life. And we got coupons, $50 worth of coupons for Office Max. So, might as well take advantage of that free money. Am I right? Absolutely. I am all about saving money. 
Um, I'm not gonna lie, we just threw out and replaced Noah's desk that was probably about 15, 18 years old. And I originally got it <laughs> garbage picking. <laughs> So it was legit trash it was. to begin with, it was and then it's apart. had an additional like 18 years of falling apart. So we threw that away last week, got him a brand new one, now he wants to put this nice whiteboard above the new desk. So that's the mission we're on, coupons in hand, wish us luck. Okay, we found the whiteboard. There is a lot of choices. This one matches my room though. Oh, well. It's got black and gray. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess that don't. choice was really fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this boy shops like his mom. In and out. <laughs> bucks. All right, we found something super awesome. Look at this. They are a fan or a light for two bucks. Two bucks. You got your colors. You got white. Pink or green for two bucks. Get them all. I mean, honestly, these are great stocking stuffers. I'm stocking up on this. Holy cow, have I mentioned how much I love this Kick 16 skateboard? I mean, I tell you what, I love it. I, all I wanna do is just play with this skateboard all day. But the truth is, there's a lot of snake work to do. And today was a really busy day. I hope you guys enjoyed kind of the feeding, pooling a bunch of snake eggs. We did a bunch of work. We do travel to Oklahoma here in two days. So uh, we will be at the Hot Rod and Reptiles Expo down at Safari Joe. So come see me if you're in that area. It's gonna be an absolutely epic time. I can't wait for the adventure. I hope that you guys have an absolutely incredible day thank you so much for watching you guys mean the world to me everything you do all your comments all your likes all your notification hitting you guys are the best make sure to be kind to somebody i promise i'm going to see you guys tomorrow ah!